Hey, Dog Treat Bakers. We're going to be talking today about making more money right now with these Make Ahead Dog Treats. But first, you guys notice I switched things up a little bit. I had a different situation going on and then I changed it and I can't really figure out what I want to do with my, with my YouTube set. So here is what we have so far. You can see my neon paw in back. I love that paw. I had many episodes without it and I'm glad it's back because I absolutely love it. And who can forget live life bork? <laughs> I've got a little donut up there, a little package of my treats. Let me know if you like it. Little fairy lights. I'm not sure if you guys can see the little bright lights there. Anyway, something new. So about making more money in your dog treat business, who doesn't want to do that? I'm going to share with you a way that you can add some extra revenue to your dog treat business. And you might think I'm so busy right now. I don't have the time. I want you to listen and learn how a few simple products can get you the extra dollars. And also right now is a great time to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the notification bell and get this dog treat information and tips all the time to help your business grow. Hey, profiteers, welcome to Positive Profit. Do you want to start a dog treat business with healthy recipes and make money selling them online and in shops? Do you find yourself up late at night wondering how to keep your soft treats fresh and sell them on social media? Do you wake up with big, ambitious goals only to feel confused and disappointed when your soft treats mold and you still don't know how to promote on social media again? Hey, I'm Kara. I too wanted to be a dog treat business owner. I also felt discouraged trying to keep my soft treats fresh, and I wished I had more online sales instead of only selling them at markets. I wanted to be home to bake more treats and make money selling them online. But I kept telling myself that I didn't know enough healthy dog treat recipes, have the Instagram know-how, or understand how to properly store my soft dog treats so they'd last longer. Until I learned how to make and sell healthy treats that dogs love and customers want to buy. In this podcast, you'll find natural dog treat recipes, kitchen tips, and all the secrets to selling dog treats online so that you'll make money and have time to bake more treats. Give your dog a treat, grab one for yourself, and let's dig in. So welcome back to another episode of Positive Profit. I'm your host, Kara Brothers. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a journey to discover a way you can take on more orders and make more money in your business, even if you're busy. And also a couple of dog-related occasions to bake for and promote that maybe you hadn't thought of. These aren't real common, so I'll be interested to see if you've heard of them before. Are you ready? Let's get going. The first thing I want to do is read a review from someone that is my friend in my Dog Treat Bakers group over on Facebook. If you haven't yet joined, please head over there. Join the pack. We would love to have you. It's facebook.com slash groups slash start a dog treat biz. And this is from Vero OC. I know her as Veronica. And it says my number one mentor. Starting a business can be a daunting task, but having the right mentor can make all the difference. For me, that mentor has been Kara. From day one, Kara has been a big support of my small business. Her invaluable guidance and support has helped me navigate the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. I've learned so much from Kara over the year, not just about business, but also about life. <laughs> she has a way of seeing things from a different perspective and challenging me to think outside the box. Her advice and support never stop. I'm so grateful to have her as a mentor. And Veronica, I'm so grateful for those words. When I got that review, I called my husband and I read him the review and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, it, it's so crazy. You guys, I have actually, just so you know, a little transition about me and my life. I'm shutting down my dog treat business, which is weird to say <laughs> after so long of, you know, getting it going. And oh my gosh, I did, I did so much and so many things, but I'm transitioning to close it down so that I can focus on this and teaching and giving you guys tips and advice on starting your own dog treat business, growing the one you already have so I can do it full time. So it's kind of bittersweet closing one chapter and then opening a door to something completely different. But I have found that this 
this is my passion. This is what I love to do. So I'm just going to keep going with it. If you have a testimony about maybe you've heard a show or heard an episode and it's helped you some way, or maybe you just have a quick question for me that you want me to air on the show, head over to my website at positiveprofit.com. That's positive with a P A W. Click on the podcast tab and scroll down to leave me a recording. I'd love to feature you on the show. Lastly, real quick, did you know that I have a community of bakers just like you? And it's a place where dog treat inspiration is shared freely with recipes, decorating tips, business ideas, encouragement, and a lot more. Come join us at facebook.com slash groups slash start a dog treat biz. Let's dig into it. The products in this category that I'm going to talk with you about are some of my all time favorites. And the reason we all need these is because there will come a time when your business gets busy and you get booked. You're busy making the treats, creating all the posts to show them off and promote them on social media. And you're doing all the grinding and your business is really growing. It's at that point, people will start coming out of the woodwork and contacting you more and more to request specialty items. And you're going to hit a point in this growth where even though you're getting busier and business is really starting to pick up, you'll want to start taking more orders. Good for you. That's the CEO boss babe in you. Okay. But you'll probably think also, Hey, I want to on one hand, but on the other hand, I don't really have time. I don't really have the bandwidth to make this happen. We always want to be growing and bringing in as much revenue as we can. All right. And here is a way that you can experience growth in your business, even when it seems like you don't have the time. The great thing about these products that I will be sharing with you is that you can make them ahead of time and freeze them for later use. And there are three great reasons why these are the types of products we should all have in our business so we don't end up leaving money on the table. Reason number one, cater to people who want to place last minute orders. And we'll talk about that. You might also be running low on products to take to an event and you might need something real quick. These are great for that. You can also use these products to upsell when a customer places an order to add on to their initial order. Okay, the products that I'm talking about that you can make ahead of time, freeze for later use, and then thaw are such items like you should be thinking about cakes, the individual layers. You should be thinking about mini pup cakes, standard pup cakes, brownies, mini doggy donuts, regular doggy donuts, cake pups, and things like that. Now, the common denominator in all of these products is that they are all soft treats and they can be made ahead of time, taken out, thawed, decorated with no problem. When it comes to cakes, the kind I offer is four inches. So I I bought these cake pans that came on Amazon. I think I got six to an order. They're about this deep and they're four inches in diameter. And I really love these because I can make several at one time. I just fill them up and put them all on a cookie sheet. And after they're done baking, I let them cool and I slice off the top. I put my knife on the top of the pan and I just scoot it right across. And that way I have a level cut every single time. And I turn out all the cakes and I wrap each one individually in saran wrap and put the individual wrapped cakes in a plastic Ziploc bag. I make sure to label and date it. And then for standard muffins this size, I like to bake them and then I will go ahead and pop them all into a plastic Ziploc bag that's labeled. Whenever I defrost them, I never have any issues. For my mini cakes, my mini pup cakes, I love Chicago, by the way. I think they're called Chicago Metallic. These are my favorite pans to use. They're very thick. They have this nonstick surface. They're heavyweight and they're really, really good quality. So I absolutely love Chicago, especially their muffin tins. And my mini muffins are easy to just go ahead and when they're done baking, pop them into a plastic Ziploc bag. When it comes to making my brownies, here's what I do a little bit differently. I love the Chicago pan. It's perfect. And either I will take a pan. I've got both. I have the ones that have the sections and the dividers for your brownie. But 
oftentimes I'll just take the, the divider out and use the pan to make a big batch of brownies. But before I put the batter in, I will line it with parchment paper and then I'll fill it up so that after it's done baking, I can easily lift out the entire rectangle of brownie and then I'll wrap it up and that's how I freeze it. I freeze it in one big rectangle. <laughs> when I need to use any of these things, I will let all of the cake products come to room temperature, thaw them out, and then I begin to decorate them. I have tried decorating them first and popping them into the freezer, but it doesn't really work out very well at all. Because like, for example, the cupcakes and the cupcakes, forget it. As they're in the bag, when the frosting touches the other frosting, it gets marred, it gets smudged. It's no fun to work with. The icing that I use for brownie, the little drizzle that I make, it doesn't look quite right <laughs> if you defrost it from that state. The icing looks a little funky. So I like to go ahead and defrost the whole rectangle and then I drizzle it. And after I drizzle it, or no, uh, no, after I defrost it, I cut it into squares and then I drizzle it. Okay. And then really with all of these, I am not decorating them ahead of time. It's just really easy to do it afterwards because all your baking's done. All of that time spent baking, cleaning up, that's already done. Just the decorating part is all you have to do left. But I wanted to show you some of the pans I use when I'm baking. And so if you're new to starting a dog treat business, maybe you don't even offer many cupcakes yet. Buy the Chicago brand. It's a little bit more expensive, but it only hurts once. And you'll have this forever. I actually have two of these. <laughs> and believe me, I make them and I use them up. Mini cupcakes and mini donuts are the cake products that sell the best for me. Because a lot of what I make is big, and so I don't offer that many little things. But believe me, there are a lot of little dog owners out there, and they love the mini treats. You can have these on hand, so you'll be ready in no time to fill an order or take them to your event. I have seen a lot of dog treat business owners on Instagram, because sometimes I <laughs> do my research, y'all, where they need 72 hours notice or maybe even longer, and they need a particular kind of notice when taking on a special order, a last minute order, a custom order, things like that. But then I also find that they're trying to do their business full time. You guys, here is the thing with that. When you're trying to be full time in business, then your business needs to be making money all the time. But most bakers are weekend bakers. They're only used to doing orders and shows on Friday, Saturday, you know, when there's a holiday coming up or a season change. And I don't want you just making money on the weekend because if you're trying to do this thing full time and you can, you've got to have, for example, insurance for your dog treat business. Maybe your cell phone is paid by the business because when people call you, you're picking up your cell phone, right? So that's your business phone and all kinds of bills that you guys might be having come in and all that's on you because they're coming every month, whether you want them or not, whether you can pay them or not, they're still coming. You might as well be prepared. Don't limit yourself to baking part-time when your bills are coming in full time. Okay. With these make ahead products, you're able to have something on hand at all times. If somebody finds you and they call you up or they hit you on Instagram and your DMS or on Facebook and they request something you can easily throw together. For example, a Barker's dozen mini doggy donuts or a quick birthday cake, a dozen mini pup cakes as party favors or something like that. Also keep some gift packaging on hand so you can throw together a last minute giftable order with these products. You'd be surprised how often people want a gift, but they don't always think of it. So always like try to weave it into the conversation whenever you can, whenever you can think about it. To learn more about having giftable items in your lineup and on your menu, go back and listen to episode 11, three money-making dog treat 
ideas that you should be baking right now to find out how you can add these products to your lineup for an additional source of revenue for your business. Now, I know I'm going to catch some slack from those of you who say, I need 72 hours notice, or there's no way I can do something same day or maybe even the next day. You guys, there is a market for this for sure. And I'm helping you to tap into it. I find there is nothing wrong with same day. Generally speaking, you know, if you even want to put a rush order fee on it, you can. That's also common in the industry. That's also up to you. I don't expect you to do a doggy wedding cake same day or a really elaborate cake same day. But think about this. If you had a couple extra cake layers in the freezer and maybe some mini donuts and you get a call from a client wanting to celebrate their dog's birthday last minute and maybe they also need some party favors or some end of life treats for a dog who received a critical diagnosis and is about to pass away. You could easily defrost, decorate, and deliver those items. Now, of course, I did mention a dog passing away, but you also need to remember that as treat makers, not only do you play a crucial role in helping owners celebrate their dog's birthday, but also when the news of end of life is received, you know, the owner finds out from the vet that their dog is going to pass away. You're also helping owners give their dog treats to comfort them and to spoil them in those sad last days. I had a situation like that. It was uh, a lady who called me and she wanted all the treats I had. She wanted one of everything that I sold because her lab, her chocolate lab had been diagnosed with something where her back legs weren't working. And then eventually she would just be paralyzed and she was going to pass away from this. And they knew something was wrong, but when they took her to the vet, they figured out, yeah, she is going to pass away from this. So she ordered one of everything I had so the family could get together and celebrate her life. And so the kids could each have their special treat to give her. And it was a really meaningful contact. And I really did a lot for that family to be able to have that special interaction with their dog. So you just really have to think about not just celebrating life, but all occasions, end of life gifts, congratulations on your new litter, you know, new dog mama. Those are two gifts that are the biggest types of gifts that I don't see people offering in their business. But it's something you should consider offering because it's just leaving money on the table if you don't. If you make a birthday cake, you can make a congratulations, you're a new mama cake or a cake for the end of life with the dog's name on it. You know, it's easy to do, but if you don't advertise it, people don't even know it's a thing. So there's a little tip for you there. In the situation where the customer called about her dog receiving that critical diagnosis from the lab with that terminal illness, they actually had to put her down in two days. And they really, really wanted to spoil her in those remaining days. I couldn't tell that person, hey, I'm too busy. And that she needed to give 72 hours notice. She didn't have that. No, you just take the items you have in your freezer, you thaw them, you decorate them, maybe put them in a gift box and you go, you go make a dog and their owner happy. And oftentimes, you know, like for her, she didn't request anything specific, right? She requested, hey, what do you have? So I had some things that I could make really special and decorate quickly for her. These make ahead products also get you off of your feet. So you're not doing the whole task for that long span of time and doing all the baking and the decorating at once by making ahead freezing. That's doing all your baking and all the cleanup for the baking at once, right? And then you take a break, right? You're doing other things until you need them. And when you need them, that's when you go decorating. So you can get off your feet and just kind of split the task up. With the exception of frosting cakes and pup cakes, decorating donuts and icing brownies, for example, are lower skill level. So when you get to the point of maybe you're going to bring your teenage son or daughter into the kitchen with you to help you or Even if you want to go farther than that and you want to hire someone, they'll be able to help you with these kinds of treats and your production will go faster because it's much easier to have them start out decorating those kinds of items than let's say a doggy birthday cake. 
And you can do it in stages, meaning you can already have the cakes and things made and frozen. And they can even practice on these things that you have made ahead and do those easy decorating things like donuts and icing brownies and things like that, just to get the hang of it, to figure out how the pastry tips work or how to mix the icing or how to add colors, piping skills, things like that. Real easy. Well, there's no piping skills on brownies. <laughs> That's the nice thing about brownies. Cakes, mini pep cakes, standard pep cakes, brownies, mini doggy donuts, regular doggy donuts, and cake pups, cake pops, you guys. Those are all make ahead treats and they're perfect if you're looking to add more income to your business, but you don't have a lot of extra time. Let me tell you that word will start to get out about your business, about how flexible you are. And if you add those two products that I was talking to you about for their end of life celebration and congratulations on your new litter, you'll also have new products to add to your lineup as well. All that's going to lead to more orders. Just to recap, it's going to help you cater to people who want to place last minute orders for things such as birthday or end of life, because chances are if you turn them away and say you don't do it, someone's going to want those dollars and they're going to accept the order and they're going to get the money. Why not you? They're also great if you're running low on products and you have an event coming up, you can just go to the freezer. They're already baked, already cooled. All you have to do is thaw and decorate and take them to your event. And you can also use these products as an upsell when a customer places an order to add on to their individual order. And what I mean by that is when a dog is having a birthday. Hey, Baker, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, would you take 30 seconds and share it with a friend who may want to bake dog treats and make money selling them online and in stores? Also, please leave a quick review for the show on Apple Podcasts. It makes me so delighted to know this podcast is helping you. Okay, time to go make another batch of doggy donuts for the sales I got on Instagram. No more markets every single weekend. I'll meet you back here every Tuesday and Thursday for more tasty dog treat content. Until then, don't forget to treat yourself well. You're making the birthday cake, but they, they might also want to have a party with their dog friends. And so now you're offering mini pup cakes to go along with the cake. Even if they don't have a dog party and have their dog friends there, the owner, I've had this happen lots of times, they'll order a cake for their dog, but they know their friends have dogs. And so they'll go ahead and give a pup cake to each of their friend's dogs. So when you offer cakes, offer those pup cakes as well as party favors, whether you want to give them now or later. You guys, I love you. Keep watching. Keep your ovens warm. Keep your those dog tails wagging with your amazing creations. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and what you want to see more of. And please don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you back here again really soon. Hey, Baker, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, would you take 30 seconds and share it with a friend who may want to bake dog treats and make money selling them online and in stores? Also, please leave a quick review for the show on Apple Podcasts. It makes me so delighted to know this podcast is helping you. Okay, time to go make another batch of doggy donuts for the sales I got on Instagram. No more markets every single weekend. I'll meet you back here every Tuesday and Thursday for more tasty dog treat content. Until then, don't forget to treat yourself well.